When retrieving JSON data from a site, you may find the need to convert the resulting object to an array in order to process the data easier. In this tutorial, we will look at how to do that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And finally, if you feel so inclined, support the channel to help keep it going. There's a link for that in the description as well. Now, if you are retrieving data from an API using Fetch, you will receive the data as JSON text, which you can then convert to a JavaScript object. Now, if that whole concept is new to you, I will link to some tutorials in the description. Now, some data may be easier to process as an array, but in order to do that, you need to convert the object to an array. So let's look at how we would take care of that. Here I have an object, pretty simple, but it represents something that I may want to convert to an array. It's simply an object of scores. Now, the trick to converting an object to an array is using the object.entries static function. So let's take a look at that. Let's set a variable ARR and set that equal to the results of using object.entries like this. Now inside the parentheses, we pass in the object that we want to convert to an array. And then basically what this is going to do is it's going to return an array of arrays. So inside of the array, this will be an array, this will be an array, and so on. Best way to illustrate this is just show it. So let me save that and let's jump out here. We'll refresh, take a look at the console. And I just want to display that array. Now you can see that we have an array of arrays. If we open that up, here we can see at position zero, we have an array that consists of the key value pair and so on. Each of those key value pairs become a two element array. So the first element is the key. The second element is the value. This puts it in an array like format. So you can use something like map, filter, reduce, whatever you need to do to work with that data. It can make it a bit easier to work with and process if needed. So that is how it ends up. But what would happen if we had a more complex object? Let's say we have an object that has sub objects or a sub array inside of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what might happen in that case. So I'm going to copy in a new object here. Just paste that in. So as we can see, this object here has a sub object right here that contains first name, last name. And then it also has an array associated with one of the properties, attempts. We have an array of dates. And then it has the same data that we had before. So what's going to happen when we convert this to an array? Well, let's go ahead and look at that. So we'll, we'll do a R R two and we'll set that equal to once again the stop the static method entries and we pass into that the object that we want to convert save that and let's see what we get this time so if i take a look at a R R two it is an array of arrays but let's look at what's inside that now notice what we get in the first element. We have student as the first part of that array. And then what is the second element of the array? Well, it's the object. And so basically the data is just passed through. If we have sub objects or we have an array like this, that data is just passed through and it becomes an element in the array. So down here, if we look at this, we can see that 
the first element is the temps property and then the second element is that array it was just passed through and placed into that second element just like the object was up above and so that's what happens if we have a more complex object now that is the process of converting an object to an array so you can work with it with some of the array methods now the entries static method has the equivalent on the array side so we could move back from an array to an object so we could convert an array to an object if we chose to and that is from entries that's also a static method on the object so it would work something like this so let me just go object dot from entries and I'll do the second array that we converted so this should convert it back to the object that we began with and if we take a look at that we see we have student there's an object there attempts object there and then we have each of the quiz one the quiz properties showing with the value the score value that they have so object dot from entries will convert an array to an object now I showed this converting something back to an object but we could take an array that we have and for some reason we want it as an object and we can convert that back but there's one trick to that and it needs to be set up in a way that that conversion could happen for example if I set up ARR3 and set that equal to just a simple array like this what's gonna happen we will go ahead and do let obj equal object dot from entries and then we'll pass in arr3 and see what we get save that and refresh notice we get an error iterator value one is not an entry object so we need to have entry objects we need to have arrays that are set up as an array of arrays in order for it to convert it to an object and then what it will do is it will take those and turn the first value of the subarray into a property the second element to a value and so on so we need to have an array of arrays so if I change this Let's just make this an array of arrays now, like this, putting arrays inside here. Now we'll save that and try it again. Now, if we take a look at object, we can see what it's done for us. It's created an object by using the first element of the subarray as the property, the second element as the value, and so on through this. So from entries is the equivalent of entries, but going the opposite direction, converting an array to an object. But really what I find most helpful is being able to, at times, convert an object to an array so that I can process it easier using some of the array methods that are available. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. And remember, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section, so you may want to check that out. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.